The following opinions are solely those of Boatest.com and its test captain. Hi, Captain Steve for Boatest.com, and today's test has a shot of cool in it. It's the Sea Legs 7.1 amphibious rib. This one's powered by the Evinrude E Tech 150. Let's take a look and see how she does. We start by getting on the water. Clearly, the Sea Legs 7.1 sport rib is a very versatile boat, and with obvious benefits not only as a tender, but to the waterfront homeowner. 150 Evinrude E Tech has many notable features that we've done a dedicated video on, but among our favorites, no break-in required the auto winterization, the bigger 133 amp alternator that lets us fill the panel with electronics and that is completely approved for saltwater use. With the Evinrude 150 E-Tech run up to full speed at 5500 RPM, we were cruising along at 42.2 miles per hour. Best cruise seemed to come in at 3500 RPM and 25 miles per hour. That speed produced a fuel burn of 6 gallons per hour that allows the sea legs to keep running for 177 miles while still holding back a 10% reserve. She handles quite well on the water and in typical fashion for what we'd expect from a rib. The 21-inch Hypalon tube served to cushion the ride while the single-piece aluminum hull provides the flotation. We noticed just a bit of a chine walk in the turns, but for the most part, she grips in quite well and comes around in short order. If taking chop broad on the bow, she'll produce a bit of a wet ride, but in an open boat such as this, that's rarely a concern. And as this one will most likely be taking its passengers aboard from the beach, it's probably even less so. Now about that beach boarding, this is an amphibious boat, so let's move on to that phase of the operation. We approach the beach normally and fire up the 22 horsepower air-cooled Honda engine, just under the helm seat. This powers the hydraulics for the drive wheels. Drop both the front and rear wheels all the way, and yes, there is a noticeable drag. Tilt the engine up so that there's a minimal amount of prop in the water. When the front wheels hit the bottom, engage the drive, add throttle, kill the outboard, bring the e -Tech all the rest of the way up, and drive up onto the beach and find a good spot to park. Now it gets cool. Rather than bored from climbing up the swim ladder or hauling yourself over the tubes, lower the wheels so that the hull is sitting in the sand. Now step over to one side and lower the wheels the rest of the way and let her lean right over. Now it's an easy step on and off with the only concern being kicking the sand off the feet before coming aboard. Time to go. Bring down the wheels till we're level, then raise the front and rear at the same time. Engage the drive and head into the water. Once in, start the E-Tech and shift into forward. Stow the wheels, kill the internal engine and drive off into the sunset. Couple of caveats. The internal engine won't start unless the outboard ignition is turned on. Both engines run on the same fuel and electrical systems, and there are two fuel tanks that can be switched from one to the other. And max speed on land is about 6 miles per hour because the focus is on torque. This boat can climb a 30% grade, but we need to trade speed for power in the hydraulic world. This to me is a good trade-off. As for her features, there are a lot of options here, but most are included in the SLI package, so that the boat is pretty much sold the way most people want it. This includes the VHF, chart plotter, stereo and speakers, all-wheel drive with differential lock, arch, headlights, floodlights, and the stainless steel swim ladder in the back. It basically lacks for nothing. Of course, there's seating for the full eight-person capacity. We can board from the tubes, but there are also non-skid steps at the stern. At the helm, the Evinrude engine control is to the right with the I command gauge just ahead providing selectable information. To the right of that is the shift lever for the wheels with the drive throttle to the left. Back on the panel are the rocker switches for lowering the front and rear wheels. The steering wheel works for both the Evinrude 150 and the front wheel. Overall, this provides a cool way for people to go boating much easier, especially for those with waterfront homes. Rather than separate the line into two categories, Sea Legs builds all of its boats to commercial specs, even if they're headed for recreational use. All the components are built for saltwater use, and the Evinrude E-Tech 150 provides a good mix of economy, power, and performance. Well, that's my full test and features inspection of the Sea Legs 7.1 Amphibious Rib. For BoatTest.com, I'm Captain Steve. We'll see you on the water. Or on land. <laughs>